Hey, everybody. Welcome to Breakfast All Day. Christy, Matt, Alonzo, I'm Your Man is the movie we're talking about this week. Uh, starring Dan Stevens speaking really, I guess, good German. I wouldn't know, but it's, it's everybody else in the movie acts like he can speak it, so I'm going to assume that he can. He's fluent in German. Good for him. What can't he do? He can sing, he can dance, he's beautiful, and he's fluent in French and German. Wow. Right? Well, I, I've wasted Damn. my life. Right. Um, anyway, so it makes sense that he's perfect because he plays a robot in I'm Your Man. I mean, I don't know. Do you want to call him a robot? I, I'm not sure what to call him. He's like a synthetic being who has been programmed to specifically cater to the whims of a person who was signed up for, you know, for companionship. He's right? not human. He absolutely he's not. is. He's not. A, you know, synthetic. at the very least... Yeah, he's at least at the very least he's a replicant, but he's he's right. faster and stronger. And but calling him a robot sounds like he's like beep beep boop boop, like he's like <laughs> Rosie the housekeeper on the Jetsons, right? <laughs> yeah, he he, he's more like Rutger Hauer in Blade Runner, but um, less homicidal and more apt to make you brunch. Basic uh, <laughs> pleasure model. Right. So, um, yes. <laughs> so Marin Eggert is this woman who is single and lonely and she agrees to try out the service for a three week trial. And she meets Dan Stevens character, Tom at a bar, which is like a, a gathering place for these kinds of meetings between humans and the, it's a showroom. The, yeah, I, I guess, <laughs> I guess so. And, uh, it's it's not like a brothel because that sounds that sounds cheap. This is like serious romantic connections are being made in this place. This is like a safe space to go and like, you know, test drive whoever it is that has been ordered for you. And he's beautiful and like they've made his eyes bluer. It seems like he already has these incredible blue eyes, but it's like they've done something to make him like superhuman, otherworldly. And he's a great dancer and he knows all of her tastes and. It says romantic things to her that are kind of stilted, but still like he's trying really hard to charm her. And it's about this literal figurative dance that they do with each other and how she is or is not willing to open herself up to him. And it's about whether or not he can adapt and not just stay on his programming, but, you know, evolve and, and actually convey legitimate human emotions and, and, uh, is beautiful and so funny. I laughed so much. And it's also quite touching and heartbreaking. This is um, written by, I'm oh, sorry, directed by Maria Schrader written, and co-written by her based on a short story. And uh, it's really lovely. I dug it. What'd you guys think? I, I love this movie. I, mm -hmm. I, it's delightful. And it's, you know, yes, it's all in German. And if you don't speak German, you're going to be reading a lot. But it is <laughs> absolutely worth it. I had the great privilege of talking to Dan Stevens about this. Um, and he's, you know, he's he's very funny because I asked him to describe the character. He's like, well, you know, he's he's sort of bland and, and has hair like a bit like Cary Grant and looks a bit like that guy from Downton Abbey. Uh, uh, yeah. He, he, um, but he's terrific in this. And one of the things he mentioned, and if you watch this in the film, you see this, he's got to be unreactive in a lot of things that make Marin Eggert have to work a lot harder because she's basically working with a board for a lot of her scenes. Like he just kind of stands there and doesn't give her much. Um, and she is just unbelievable in this movie. I mean, as good as he is, she is terrific because at no point do you feel like like she's treating him mostly like in spite of like calling him a robot she reacts to him like a person and this is a woman who is conflicted you know she's agreed to do this experiment because she's it's going to help her get the grant to do the thing she's okay. working on okay. which that has a whole other side note that happens that you really see her wrestle with um yeah there's you know a couple of little twists in it um but I think this movie is very fun. It is very touching uh, and it is kind of sappy. And it's, it's, you know, as far as rom-coms are concerned, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a terrific kind of sci-fi flavored rom-com. And I, I really, really hope you, people give this one a shot. The premise sounds so like 
an 80s high concept romantic comedy. Making right? Mr. Right. Like, oh yeah, or like Weird Science. <laughs> Yeah, or like too, yeah. electric dreams, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. things like that, where it's like that. humans falling in love with robots or machines or whatever. It's, and it sounds like it's wacky. And there are some moments of physical humor, but it's more emotional than that. So I like this movie a lot. I, I want to be clear about that. And I might be veering into spoiler ter territory. So if people don't want to hear this part, maybe skip ahead. But I, I, I went through this. I went, I went on a journey with this movie because okay. on the one hand, you have Mary Eggert's character um, constantly talking about why this is a bad idea and why human beings shouldn't be falling in love with these robots that have design, been designed to the last detail just to appeal to them. That, that ultimately that's like, she goes, I, when I talk to you, I'm having a monologue because there's no you. You're just there to be what I want you to be. And, the, and she makes this case very convincingly over the course of the film. And it was like, and so I thought I liked the sort of prickly tension of that. And so then at the end where it appears like it's going to go into a more traditional rom-com space, I thought, is this a betrayal? Like, is this, is the movie backpedaling from what it was trying to say? And then for me, I thought, no, this movie is about social media. And it's about how social media has been crafted to be what we want it to be. It's always an echo chamber. There's always an algorithm that shows us this, but doesn't show us that and surrounds us with people who think the way we do and have the same opinions and all that stuff. And we know this, and we yeah. can't give it up. <laughs> and so for me, the movie is kind of tweaking this rom-com idea of like, yes, it's all wrong, but they get together at the end anyway. It's like, no, the movie is saying they're all wrong, but she can't help it because this is such catnip for human beings. We are so attracted to the notion of this thing that is being crafted for us, even if we know it's a bad idea, that we fall in love with it anyway. And maybe that's maybe I'm wrong. Maybe no. that's a maybe I'm, no, I'm misinterpreting. That's an excellent point. That's a really that's, good insight. Alonzo. That's it. Like I, I, when I when I ended the movie, I was mad about it, but then I like waited a day or two for my review, and then that hit me, and I was like, oh, that's what this movie's about. I, again, your mileage may vary, but that's what I brought away from this. And on that level, I thought it was brilliant. That's an excellent idea that never occurred to me. And I'm very impressed. Right, especially <laughs> because the time that he tells her something she doesn't want to hear, he adjusts. It's right. <laughs> but it's disastrous for her, mm. right? Um, oh, yeah. oh, that part, yes, yeah. yes, yes. But I mean, and, there's a part early- he, But there's a part but he adjusts early on to that he, too. Yes, exactly. There's a part early on where he may, he says something and she responds that way and he goes, oh, I'll have to fix the algorithm on that one. You know, and he, he tries to like, he, he, make, he draws a bath for her and covers the bathroom in rose petals. And he's like, 97% of German women say, this is their fantasy. And she's like, well, I, I'm in the other 3%. So he's constantly adjusting just to accommodate her. And like, you know, and, and part of me, I, while watching this film, I thought, this movie is saying really bleak shit about relationships. <laughs> if, it's, if, it's, if the notion is that like that we do nothing but but mold ourselves into being what the other person wants and nothing else, but then I but then I realize no 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 this is a, a machine that is doing that. And even though she knows she keeps articulating in her very academic way why this is a terrible thing, she ultimately can't resist it. I like it. Matt, does this track with your conversation with Dan Stevens? That didn't come up at all. Actually. <laughs> um, I, Again, I, I could be totally wrong. No, no, no. I would love to have brought that up to him. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, he was funny, though, because he had said, you know, he's there's probably four other English actors that also speak German. He's yeah. like, thankfully, it's a short list. I think everybody else was busy. Um, <laughs> Nah, like, he's perfect because he's so pretty. If you look at him with something like Eurovision, you know, like mm, he's right. willing to go to weird places. Like there's that interesting dichotomy between like what he looks like and like what he can actually do, like the weird side of being beautiful. I think like Zach Efron does that sometimes too. Yeah. You know, so, and they, they even talk about how like part of what makes him ideal for her is that she likes dudes who are exotic, but not too foreign. So the right. idea of somebody speaking British accented German is that like, you know, right in her wheelhouse. That was so. a fascinating little detail, yeah. Because <laughs> I didn't pick up that he was speaking German with a British accent. Well, we don't know. Yeah. I don't, like, I don't I know. Would, yeah, yeah. But he does speak German. <laughs> anyway, I'm saying eight. What'd you guys say? Seven and a half. Okay. Uh, what did say I nine. say? Nine. Yeah, I say Ooh. nine. Okay. All right, so 8.2 is our number. Um, I'm Your Man is in theaters right now, but it's going to be on VOD beginning on October 12th, so that's just in a few days from today, um, and then it'll be streaming, I believe, early next year, like for free streaming. So go find it. It's lovely. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, and definitely Dan Stevens is just like, you never know where he's, where, you know, we, he has made, I was mad when he left out. And I have to say as a fan of that show, but his film choices from, from that point on have been really unpredictable and interesting. I mean, the cobbler, I guess could have happened to anybody, but like, you yeah. know, I, I think he, he goes out of his way to take on things that are unexpected. And so like, uh, you know, he's, he's, he remains someone to watch always. The guest. Uh, Exactly. Yes. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching everybody. Like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us at be fast all day on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash be fast all day. Lots of stuff happening over there. Our TV recaps. We're at the season finale of Ted Lasso. Lots to unpack. there. also talking about the morning show. Uh, you get to see all of these videos with no commercial interruption, unlike here at uh, YouTube, if that's where you're watching. Um, so that's a perk for sure. And of course, also we are our monthly off the menu we are having our uh, subscribers select a horror film that we'll review this month uh julia de Corneau's raw is leading the pack right now but it's anybody's ball game so get in there and vote become a member at patreon.com slash be fast all day thanks for watching we'll see you next time Hi. Zane. Mm -hmm.